if you're in Texas like I am, where it currently feels like it's a thousand degrees outside as I'm filming, creating some Christmas DIY projects just might be the trick to cool you down. I'm sharing seven super easy Christmas decor DIY projects to show you how easy it is to get ready for the holidays and I'm using plaid products to do it with. Today's video is part of not one but two playlists and it's my normal fourth Friday playlist that I do with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY and the theme this month is Christmas in July and I'm going to have a link to that playlist as well as to Sarah's channel in the description box below. I will tell you more about the second playlist and there's a giveaway in just a little bit, but first, on this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor, and if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is Our Gray House. Jumping right into DIY number one, I'm taking this crate that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm giving it a good coat of the folk art paint in the color white. Now keep in mind, with the crates and wood pieces that you get from Dollar Tree, you often have to sand them down because they're not, they're a little on the rough side. And then I have this um, Christmas print fabric that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm cutting an approximate one inch strip. Then I'm taking some hot glue and just in little sections because for whatever reason the hot glue seemed to dry really fast, I'm just gluing it down. I didn't do anything to the edges of the fabric. I'm just hot gluing it all the way around so that it looks like one singular book in the book stack. Oh, if you didn't know I'm making a book stack. <laughs> I did cut out a decal that says Feliz Navidad with my Cricut and I'm just applying it to the front of the book stack. The back actually says Merry Christmas so it's going to be a double sided book stack but I didn't cut them out separately I just cut them on a long strip and I'm using Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape to do this. I am obsessed with this stuff y'all. And to embellish the book stack I am giving four beads a coat of crimson um, plaid paint, <laughs> Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. I'm giving them a good coat. Okay, to finish this off, you'll notice that on one side, the Merry Christmas, the twine is going to kind of wrap over it. So I didn't plan to put the Merry Christmas and Police Navidad on the same side so I could put the twine on the other side. Anyway, it works out fine. Um, um, if I decide to show the Merry Christmas side, I'll just scooch the twine down to the other end. Anyway, I'm adding two beads to each little strand there and I'm making a cute little bow and that's gonna be it. And this is how it turned out. I think it turned out super cute and I can't wait to put it on my tear tray. As I mentioned before, this video is part of two playlists and one is my normal fourth Friday one, but the other one is the plaid gift away playlist. And if you want to enter to win free plaid craft products, you have to do so by July 30th. You have to watch and like each video in the playlist and each creator is going to feature a plaid product and mention a single product for the giveaway. Then you comment which plaid product they said in the comments of their video and you must be in the continental United States and the deadline again is July 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So basically I just put this clip in here as proof that I actually do some of, <laughs> some of my woodworking stuff. No, really. I'm just using a miter box and um, they're like 15, 20 bucks. You can get them on Amazon at your local hardware store. I think I have mine linked down in the description box below, but I'm just cutting some paint sticks, two of them down to size. And this is just me going through my little box of scrap wood pieces to kind of figure out how I want to attach these two paint stir sticks together. Um, this is prior to me cutting them down. But anyway, I'm trying to figure out like, okay, do I use the thicker one? Do I use a popsicle stick? Do I use this other piece of wood? Just to kind of stabilize and put them together. And y'all will be happy to know that I have, since this video is filmed, I have gotten some more wood glue. Anyways, I'm just taking some wood glue because it's raw wood to raw wood so it will adhere with the wood glue really well. And I'm just gluing some pieces of craft stick, popsicle sticks, on the back there to kind of stabilize the back and keep all of it together.
I've let that dry for a little bit and I'm giving it a coat <laughs> with Captain's help of the Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. several things to note in this clip. I did sand the bottom so that I could have a raw wood section to be able to glue a tower tumbling block to it later to help stand it up. I used a black paint pen to make that little black line that you see there and I used my Cricut to create a decal that says ho ho ho. But after I got all of the three you know ho ho hoes on <laughs> I, I felt like they just looked too small but anyway i'm taking a gold paint pen and i'm drawing in or painting in a buckle so i take my little picker tool that i got from dollar tree and i remove those decal letters but you can kind of still see them so i'm not really sure exactly what to do about that because i didn't want to entirely paint over it so i tried just lightly sanding but anyway i ended up just putting them on over and then I was just hoping for the best. <laughs> and I tell y'all all the time that you could actually use stickers to do this part. You could hand letter it, which I actually, I kind of wish I had hand lettered and kind of put the letters like at angles, like so they just looked a little more whimsical and fun and quirky, but I didn't. I just cut out a bigger, the, the same word, but in bigger letters and attached those to my little sign. So y'all, I got a new bottle of glue and I'm just adding some glue to the tower tumbling block and I left a little raw piece of wood back there. I didn't paint it, I unpainted piece of wood area. Anyway, I'm putting glue on there and then I'm gonna glue that to each thing and that's gonna make the base for my sign. And then it's just a matter of taking some Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson that I've been using this whole video and painting over the areas that are not painted. And Marvin said the top of the sign looked a little plain, so I'm adding some holly and some little berries and just using different paint pens and different paint to do that. And this is how it turned out. I think it turned out super cute. Now I do wish I, I probably need to kind of go back on that buckle and add a little bit of yellow to kind of brighten it up a little bit, but I think it looks really cute. Here we go with DIY number three. I'm at you won't know this, but I was at my other office earlier and it started to get a little bit loud with everybody talking and stuff. So I came home. I'm doing laundry. So if you hear the laundry, that's why. Anyway, I found this corrugated tin sign at Dollar Tree and it had a heart on the front. And so I was screwed on with two little screws, took those off and now I'm just cleaning it up. And I found this sign from Hobby Lobby and it was 90% off their spring clearance last year. Super cute sign, but I'm removing the little sticker off the back because y'all know, even though you're not going to see this, I remove it anyway. And then I'm also removing the little metal hanger and that kind of stuff. Now the sign is super cute on its own, but I take some, I think it's folk art paint in the color white and I'm going to go over it with a good coat to cover everything completely. But y'all, I don't, I don't, the white wasn't doing it for me. So I decided to do red. So I took Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and I'm giving it a good coat of that paint. I guess that white paint was kind of like a primer for me anyway. I am also going to be using some beads for embellishment. So I am painting two of the beads with the Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And then I'm going to paint four other beads with that folk art paint in the color white. I untied one end of that little hanging thing for the sign. And now I'm just stringing on the beads in the order that I'd like them. I'm doing a white, a red, a white, and then a white, red, white. And I did use my Cricut to create a decal that says be Mary. And I'm just applying that with that expressions, vinyl paper transfer tape onto the front. Y'all that paper transfer tape, I know I, I just keep talking about it, but it really, it doesn't pull up the paint. It transfers the decal so easily. I'm just really loving it. And once that's done, I just need to apply the sign to the be Mary sign to the corrugated tin sign. And I did use hot glue, but I did go back in with those little tiny screws. 
I made like a little pilot hole with a, a pointed end a screwdriver thing and then I screwed in those screws. And y'all, this is how it turned out. Super simple, but oh my gosh, I just love it. I think it is so beautiful. DIY number four, this was going to be a whole, I'm going to show you how to use Mod Podge to make crackle paint. And it was a complete failure. I tried many times with this, with this little project here. It never worked out. So I just painted it with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Crimson. And then as you can see, I've taken some painter's tape and kind of sectioned off so that the middle section is just visible and I'm taking that folk art paint in the color white and I'm giving it several good coats to cover all of the coats of red paint that I just put on. Okay, I'm using a ruler, oh my gosh, and I'm kind of marking off where I want the black line to go and then I take this little sponge dauber thing and I make two little dots, if you can kind of guess what I'm making, but it's going, going to be like kind of like a Santa. Hello, Captain. It's going to be kind of like Santa's suit. And now I'm just drawing a or painting a black line all the way across. That's going to be his belt. And then I decide to go in with some painter's tape to kind of give me a crisper line. And I don't know if y'all remember me mentioning earlier, but I decided to put some yellow paint on first and then go back with the gold. And that's how it turned out. See, I think it made it that gold color pop a lot more. And I just love how it turned out. Okay, here we are in our workshop, AKA the garage, and we're cutting out the next project. But let me show you something. Marvin is just so much better at getting those edges rounded, whereas mine were a lot choppier. So anyway, I'll let him do this part. And now that it's done, let's do DIY number five. This is going to be a Santa's hat. And again, I was going to do the whole crackle thing. That didn't work out. Let's not dwell on the past, shall we? But I'm just taking a little, uh, little, a pencil and kind of tracing out where the trim of the hat will be. So I kind of know where to paint and just kind of sketching that out. And then going in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and kind of giving the cap some color. And I am painting both sides of the cap, but now I'm taking that folk art paint in the color white and I'm coloring in the trim of the hat. And then I'll also, you know, paint in the um, little pom-pom ball on the end of his hat. <laughs> So I decide I want to give this little hat some dimension and I take some gray paint. I can't remember the kind, but it's, it's another way really chalk paint and I'm kind of going around the edges, trying to create a little bit of a shadow effect. I go in with a little bit more white to lighten it back up again. And I'm just trying to give it some depth and dimension, like I said. And then I also go on the top of the hat, the red part, and I kind of um, take some of that gray paint and make a little line. As you see, I just did there to kind of denote the hat and then I kind of go over it with red paint to fade it out a little bit. So back in the garage, <laughs> cutting out another wood piece. I really do like using the jigsaw. I'm not great at it, but I'm getting better at it. And I think as I do more and more projects, I'll get more comfortable with the jigsaw and my projects will turn out a lot better as I as I get better. I just repeated myself 80 times. <laughs> but on to DIY number six. This is going to be a snowman if you can't guess by the shape. And I'm using that folk art paint in the color white to give the snowman body some color. White's a color. And I've had some folks ask me what kind of wood. I think it's pine. I'm not exactly sure. I just know I got it at Lowe's. And now I'm taking some black paint. It's another Waverly chalk paint. I want to say it's a color ink. Gosh, I really should know this before I start doing my voiceover. Anyway, as you can see, I'm painting the hat. 
And of course we have to have some buttons for this snowman. Now this one is gonna be a little rustic, a little primitive. I intentionally am not trying to make this look perfect. So that's how that's turning out. Now here's the finished product. I love it. I think it's just so cute. I just embellished it with some twine, wrapped that around twice, kind of like a scarf. Y'all, I, I love snowman and I love this, how this turned out. Remember, I told y'all that this is part of the plaid gift away playlist. And if you look at my description box, you'll see that plaid playlist link. Click on that, watch all the videos, like them, and then comment the secret word. My secret word for my video is crimson. Make sure you watch all the videos, get their secret words, comment them, like the videos, and have fun. Also, I have a Facebook group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY, and that's also going to be a link. A lot of cool stuff in the description box below. Okay, the final DIY, DIY number seven. Um, I'm showing you, I was originally going to do this, again, the crackle paint thing, but anyway. I was gonna see if it worked on cardboard. And so I created this little coffee cup shape out of a piece of cardboard and I'm just painting it with that Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson, just to kind of see how it works. And I knew I was making a tassel, so I needed some beads. So I put some beads onto a bamboo skewer that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm painting them with the Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson as well. Then I decided to switch gears and actually make the little coffee cup out of wood. So I had this little wood square that I got from Dollar Tree. It came up in a pack of like, I don't know, five or six, I think. And I'm just tracing out the shape onto that. Captain is really not helping, but he's there for moral support, I guess. And then I go into my garage as you can see our vehicles are right there so, and I'm cutting out the coffee cup shape and as you can see I decide to switch gears and I'm painting the coffee cup with Waverly chalk paint in the color fern and giving it a nice coat I wanted to show y'all, I actually had to cut this out twice because the first time I cut it out, the wood just kind of splintered. So if you try this at home and you're using your jigsaw, just go slow, steady and slow with it and it'll work a lot better. Then of course I needed to paint the top of the coffee cup with that folk art paint in the color white. And to clean up those lines where the coffee lid meets the cup, I'm just taking some painter's tape and then I'll add some more moss, Waverly chalk paint in the color fern, not moss, fern. Adding that there to kind of crisp up, crisp up that line. And now I'm taking a black paint pen. You could use a Sharpie if you don't have that. You can actually use a fine tipped paintbrush and do the same thing. I'm just kind of outlining the coffee cup and adding some kind of like depth and dimension to it. Then I'm taking a fine tipped paint brush and I'm going in with some of that gray paint again and kind of mixing it with the white a little bit because I'm trying to create some shadows to give a def additional depth and dimension. Now I'm taking some white paint with that fern color and I'm making a circle in the center and I'm not leaving it that bright because it's a little bright right now, but I'm just trying to give some highlight to the center of the cup to mimic where the um, logo is from another, my favorite coffee shop. I love Starbucks. I know some people don't like Starbucks, but I do. Starbucks hot chocolate is my jam. Okay, so I have already strung the beads onto the twine, but what I like to do is kind of weed some of that twine back up into the beads. So it just gives it a, the tassel a cleaner look. And then I take some of that jute twine, I wrap it around my hands about 20 times to create the tassel. And again, I try to not have like little tails hanging out. I like it all to look neat and clean. And once you get that tassel made, and I could do a separate video on this on how to do one, you just kind of give it a little hair trim and even things up. I add that decal that I used 
cut out with my Cricut and this is how it turned out. I think it's super cute. I really like it. I like how I kind of highlighted that center there and gave it a little bit of depth and dimension. I just, I think it turned out really great. Thank y'all so much for watching today. Really do appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed all the DIYs that I made. Don't forget, there are two playlists that you can check out to get some awesome Christmas decor inspiration. And those are gonna be linked in the description box below. And um, don't forget the secret word, put the secret word in the comments. And um, I hope you have an amazing day. And don't forget, if you wanna follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. Bye.